the NRU reactor is a very complex machine. In getting the repairs started, we've had to dismantle most of the core of the reactor. We had to take out many of the reactor components to make way for tooling, to provide non-destructive examination, to clean the vessel, to weld the vessel, to take various samples of the vessel for metallurgical examination. All of those activities required the vessel to be defueled and to be drained. And at this point, we're just in the transition where we'll start to restore all that we've undone to get NRU back in service. That involves putting back together all of the reactor core components in a very logical order in parallel with completing the last of the vessel leak repair activities. For instance, in order to refill the vessel, we have 18 systems that are required to be returned to service. So there's 18 procedures to go through and checklists to verify to ensure that each of these systems is ready for use. We have a 36-day intensive schedule to complete all of the activities. So we got very detailed planning on which systems come online at which time and what state the systems have to be as we go forward. Throughout the process, we have a number of points of oversight, an awful lot of inspection, an awful lot of confirmation of activities. So we've said we've done various tasks. We need to show and documented evidence that in fact we have. In addition to AECL's initiatives, we do have oversight from other parties, the key one being the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission. And so a lot of effort goes into building up the safety case and all of the supporting documentation and evidence to provide to the CNSC. And this will be presented at a commission hearing that will occur two to three weeks after we complete the uh, last repair of the vessel. There's over 600 training activities planned as we move through this entire process. In our return to service tracking, we're tracking over 3,000 different tasks and activities to completion. Well, at the end of the day, what we're looking for is a safe operation of NRU with an increased reliability. So over the last year, with improvements to many systems, then bringing the reactor online safely, that's a key. And that would be the goal of the overall program, having a stable, uninterruptible supply of isotopes and the safe operation of NRU in the future. The remainder of the return to service project has been well planned. We have the people to execute it. We have the systems and processes in place to do it safely. It's really going to come down to the uh, synchronized execution of that team and dealing with any emergent items that come up as we return the entire reactor back into service. NRU has a long history and a long history of isotope production. This reactor is absolutely critical to the supply of radioisotopes worldwide. It's absolutely critical to the health of Canadians. NRU is also absolutely critical to the community, to the CANDU development program, and to the research program through the National Research Council. So it gets personal, and I think virtually everybody who is associated with this program has some sort of personal attachment to getting NRU running.